morning dear students welcome back this is my sixth video on physics of animation in this video i think i can complete the portion so first i start with motional graphs are the graphs representing different types of motion and then uh, character animation two examples i will take meanwhile some calculations also so motion graph what actually motion graph is dear students in puc you might have studied position time graph please recall in plus one or uh, in pu you studied xt graph xt graph is is nothing but position time graph in which position is taken along x axis time is taken along y axis this xt graph tells you so many things about the motion of the body from the xt graph you can find out what type of the movement is whether the body is moving with constant velocity or variable velocity whether it is at rest or in motion from the xt graph you can calculate the distance traveled uh, velocity all these things okay so you you, you have studied in puc i am sure you studied this in puc same xt graph here it is called as motion time graph see dear student if the motion time graph is like this what does it tell sir it tells that the body is moving with the constant velocity so what is the role of motion graph in animation it is very important for an animator first of all animator don't know whether the body is moving with constant velocity or constant acceleration or zero velocity velocity can be zero you know velocity can be zero but speed cannot be zero okay so all those things you don't know suppose if you just give the graph from the graph you can make out that ah this is a body moving with uniform velocity zero acceleration so accordingly i have to frame accordingly i have to give the spacing accordingly i have to uh, make the timing like that so you will come to know what type of motion the body uh, is having so if the graph is like this it is constant velocity zero zero acceleration that means it is uniform motion for such type of motion graph that man who is doing the animation has to give equal spacing the timing is very simple uniform spacing equal intervals of time equal distance he covers that is a motion time graph for a constant velocity suppose if the motion time graph is something like this a curved one what does it indicate yes you are correct it represents a body moving with constant constant acceleration constant acceleration we already discussed for constant acceleration spacing cannot be same and that spacing we determine with the help of odd rule and odd rule multiplier and here curvature represents the acceleration if the curve is very flat like this less acceleration if the curvature is more like this it is more acceleration but still in each case it is constant only okay it is constant only suppose if the position time graph or motion graph is something like this what does it represent sir it represents negative acceleration that is retardation or deceleration this if it is for slow out process this will be for slow in process so like this he has to frame the time he has to make the timing and he has to design the frames like this during animation so this is about motion graphs i hope you got it it is just revision or repetition of your xt graph or position time graph yes dear students with this now i move on to the last part of this chapter that is examples for character animation i take two examples as per the syllabus first one is jumping process jumping and walking are two commonly discussed animation character animation processes okay jumping and you know already jumping jumping is nothing but a person starting from lowest position taking off and then moving in a particular path see here jumping is action the path in which the character is moving character is moving not the character's part the whole character is moving is nothing but path of action okay now in jumping we come across with four different stages four to five stages i divide the whole process into four stages initially girl is in this position getting ready to take off this is called crouch position c r o u c h crouch position just uh, okay you just recall how you jump starting from the you know bent position you little bit rise and then take off and then float in air and then start landing like that so initially it is crouch position and in each case we have to consider mass of this girl or my boy that is nothing but center of gravity center of gravity you 
know what is center of gravity. It is a point where the entire mass of the body appears to be concentrated. These are all very fundamental. This is what is physics, okay? So who says there is no physics in animation? Look at this. We have to consider center of gravity. You have to calculate the center of gravity, you know, uh, using that, uh, uh, you know, distribution of particles, uh, symmetry of particles, uh, mechanics of particles. You can calculate center of gravity. There are so many equations. In PUC, you might have studied the center of gravity formula. Uh, that is m1 x1 plus m2 x2 plus m3 x3 divided by x1 plus x2 plus x3. Please recall some two years back you studied this. Yeah, center of gravity. I hope you know this. So initially crouch position. Afterwards, okay, see once he jumps, he goes like this and then falls like this. Okay, so next uh, uh, that girl will be in this position. Now almost, uh, okay, ready to leave the ground. Still her feet is in contact with the earth and this is nothing but take off take off position now what she is doing from the crouch position to take off position her center of gravity has moved through certain distance and this distance is known as push height push height okay she or he is pushing her body and to take off from the ground please recall how we jump we press the earth and then we come back that is newton's third law when you push the earth that is action earth in turn will give you a push that is reaction so the center of gravity moved through certain distance that is push height and whatever the time he she takes or she takes that is nothing but push time okay now now, how do you define push height and push time? It is a distance between center of gravity in the crouch position and the takeoff position is known as push height. Time taken for this height to cover is known as push time. And then once she takes off, she will move in parabolic path. Okay, she goes here, right? She goes here and center of gravity will be somewhere here. And finally, she will be here. This is the center of gravity. Okay, and now from the initial position, Position, her center of gravity covers certain height that now she is in air so third step is in air third step is in air now from the crouch position to maximum height position whatever the distance she or he has covered that is nothing but jump height jump height it is something like your maximum height in parabolic motion please recall parabolic motion parabola okay project motion this is called maximum height in PUC you studied this projectile motion and process of going up is called ascending coming down is called descending okay now this girl is coming down so she will come to this position right okay so so this position and then right like this and then like this okay so she is proceeding towards the landing so last one is landing landing is again opposite of takeoff okay and before landing just before landing her body will be in the straight position from here to here like from takeoff to say crouch like that land off landing to crouch landing to crouch she once she comes back no she will be in the crouch position only she will not stand so jumping you just recall you if you want you can jump once and uh, you know convince yourself when she comes back this is nothing but what is called stop height that is a stop height stop height and whatever the time she takes for that is called stop time so i explained four stages crouch that is initial stage just ready to Oh, push herself next take off just after push her body becomes straight and ready to take off right like flight ready to take off like that and then time taken for that to, to happen is called push time distance covered during that interval is called push height and then once she or he takes off she will be in air floating in air that is in air so total distance maximum height to, she, to which she can jump is a jump height and whatever the time she takes for this you know it is called jump time I didn't mention it remember it is jump time it is something like time of ascent so total time to go from here 
to there so the time interval during which she was in air okay that is jump time and then stop height stop time stop height is nothing but the time interval between landing position and crouch position and time taken for that is stop time okay so jump time jump time is the total time in which she was in air not time of ascent total time taken for the event and then jump height is a maximum height take, take uh, travel push height is the distance between cgs of crouch position and take off position and corresponding time is push time like that okay all distances are measured with respect to center of gravity only i hope you got this jumping jumping i divided into four segments 1 2 3 4 crouch position take off position in air position landing position and this whole path is nothing but path of action the trajectory traveled by the center of gravity is nothing but path of action i hope you got it okay dear students now comes what is called jump magnification and time calculation time for ascent time for upward motion is t so now first i will calculate t you know how to calculate s is equal to half at square so that is t square s is nothing but jump h h that is 2 h divided by g please recall s is equal to ut plus half at square okay half half i take it here 2s that is g 2s is equal to gt square right or s is equal to sorry t square is equal to 2s divided by g okay this i have written instead of s i have written as h from this equation we can calculate the time next jump magnification jump magnification follow carefully is nothing but jump height jump height divided by push height push push height okay also jump magnification we define as jump time divided by push time divided by push time we can expect numericals on these definitions we can also show that jump magnification is push acceleration push acceleration divided by acceleration due to gravity dear students just remember these three equations we can derive but not necessary jump magnification is given by three equations in terms of height in terms of time in terms of acceleration in terms of height and time we have jump in the numerator push in the denominator whereas in the case of acceleration it is push in the numerator acceleration due to gravity is in the denominator so i will solve numericals on this particular equations in the numerical section okay so with the help of jump magnification we can find the time and we can uh, find the height accordingly we can uh, you know design the frames and we can have the spacing ultimately it is a timing and spacing and designing the frames that's all okay so if you know what is the distance between these two positions or these two positions or these two positions then you can decide how many frames to be placed what should be the total time what should be the spacing all these things okay so like how jumping is animated jumping character is animated okay so this is about uh, jump magnification time taken and the uh, four different positions in jumping that is crouch take off in air and landing with this i move on to the last part of this chapter okay that is second example for character animation that is walking okay dear students even walking is also best example for non uniform motion where acceleration is not constant we are not applying the same force we may accelerate sometimes we may retard sometimes we may change our force okay but assume that the whole walking is divided into different parts and thereby we can treat each part as the motion with constant acceleration it is actually walking walking is nothing but step by step movement left right left right like that okay so i take left step here left afterwards comes right okay and then again left and then right this way of course each step is of same length because our feet are of same length like that left right left right like that now we define two parameters called step and stride stride what is step and stride step is nothing but left and right or right and left one step two step like that okay step is nothing but each step that's all either left or right and distance between left and right may be front of left to front of right or back of left to back of right that is nothing but step 
length or step distance did you understand so it is front of left to front of right or black back of left to back of right is a step distance now another distance called straight length what is straight length it is front of left to front of left or front of right to front of right this is a straight distance okay see in the step distance in between no steps whereas in straight between two right step we have one left step or between two left step we have one right step so this is also step sorry straight length okay so these two things are very important based on this we define a parameter called gate gate is the time unit say time parameter for animation purpose don't think that gate is a unit of time or the name of time this is only an abbreviation or some some you let word used for timing the frame during walking what is gate it is a distance between two successive sorry it is a time between two successive steps two successive steps uh, time is gate for normal walking it is half second that is a uh, first step and the next step between these two there is a gap of half second Dear students, just to pictureize this jump, walking also like jumping. While walking, sometimes both of our feet feet will be on the ground. Sometimes one feet will be on the ground. Okay, in another one will be in the air. Okay, so on an average. 60% of time we will be on single support that means only one leg touching the ground remaining 40% we will be on the support of both the legs 20% 20% right totally 40% double support 60% single support got it always either we will be on single support or in the double support so that our body will be in contact with earth only say I am now standing both the legs are in contact this is uh, double support now I am walking so I lift my left so my right another leg is in contact this is single support so I keep this leg and then I go so again single support so single support 40% double sorry single support 60% double support 40% and uh, for normal walk the gap interval is a time gap is half second okay half second on an average normal walking normal walking will be having half second got it suppose if you want to increase your walking rate if you want to walk briskly then you should have at least that means you should now reduce the stride length you should reduce the step sorry you should increase the step stride you have to sorry you have to increase the stride you have to increase the stride that means uh, you have to put your legs uh, at larger distance so that you can cover more distance so increase the stride as well as a step or you put more and more steps in lesser and lesser intervals of time on an average if you put four to five steps in one second it is going to be brisk walk suppose if you put more than seven seven eight nine what it will be it is going to be running okay so one second two steps one step half second one second two steps one second two steps means normal walking one second four steps to five steps means brisk walking one second seven to eight steps means running so accordingly you design the frames okay so this is about uh, character animation of walking animation of walking character so dear students with this I have come to an end of physics of animation I tried my level best to explain the physics of animation I tried to find out where all physics is involved so okay I tried my level best to make the things as simple as possible I am happy that you all are receiving it in a very sportive manner and in a enthusiastic manner and you are encouraging me your uh, support is giving uh, energy so that I can do more and more videos and you people are requesting me to do videos on numericals also definitely I will do and also I will start with the discussion of model question paper there are two question papers I will discuss the model question papers in my usual style of explanation I hope you will enjoy that also and I hope it will also benefit you for the forthcoming examinations please share your comments and share this video with your friends subscribe to my channel and I'm going to be there with you not only physics even other topics also okay I will try to assist you don't think that physics is there only for first semester whenever wherever I find physics in your higher semesters I will try to be there and I will try to come to your support okay so this is the assurance what I can give my from my side so subscribe to my channel support me thank you thank you very much